Greetings, friends, and welcome back to another deviation with Sow and Prop Works. Now, this is the wall of my living room, and I want to put these arches on it as a facade. I have done these before, and it's all removable, so it's usually about the beginning of September I put these up, and at the end of Christmas they take it down because they're not specifically themed for anything. They just look nice, and all through the holidays, this looks fantastic. Now, the first time I did it, I did it out of one inch styrofoam, very simple, blocky, look good, but I can do better. Times change and, you know, I look at things how they go. So this was sketched up on my Vectorworks and what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be building an installation. And this, while it's going on my wall, lots of techniques here for making this thing for, you know, uh, set decoration for your own house. Lots of neat tricks. This is a great little way to add uh, texture and, you know, theme without adding a lot of depth to the wall. Regardless, enjoy. And you're still here. I mean, hey, thanks for sticking around. First thing we're going to get into is this very bottom block. This is the one that sits against the floor. So when you have this one, of course, one of the considerations you have is most rooms have a baseboard along the bottom. And that's why this block is usually one of the biggest when I do these kind of things to make sure that when this goes on and I, you know, tape it to the wall or make a stick to the wall however I want, that it's got some good strength to it. Now, initially I was going to do this just as a, a four inch by a four inch block by I think it's nine inches tall. Instead, I went with this. Uh, me and my uh, bandsaw were having a little bit of an argument on this one, so for some reason it was cutting crooked. I'm not going to blame the user. I, it's all about that bandsaw. I don't know why it was cutting crooked. It has nothing to do with me. So, all I did here is a very simple block. You know, it's nothing overly complicated. I just took a four inch piece of styrofoam, cut out a swoop of the top, and then I made sure that I had at least two inches up here because at the top, we're going to be putting on the next piece, which is that piece right there. And then we have a cap on the top, which is going to be similar in style to this one. And then this upper area is all going to be wood. I'm doing, or not real wood, it's going to be foam wood. But I wanted to do some nice scalloped finials here. And I couldn't do it before because all my depths were wrong. Now, on the original one that I did. So, all I have done is I built four of these. And I carved them with your lovely X-Acto knife. And roughened it up a bit because I kind of visualized these are made out of like concrete or limestone, you know. It will look good but it's allowed to have some deviation in how it actually looks and at the back here you can see I've got a cutout and it's actually when you put a piece on you'll see it is a significant cutout because my baseboard goes through here and when I put this on the wall I want to make sure that it sits flat against the drywall above the board so it doesn't float out from the wall and give it reason to be kicked which is one of the biggest problems with this thing is it gets booted. So I want to make sure that this is done strong. Now this one, like my cartouche that I had done before, I'm going to be coating in um, the acrylic grout to give it a little bit more strength, allow it to have a bit more resilience against people accidentally kicking it. This is already high density foam and I've already hit it with the heat gun to give it that extra bit of strength. The grout will just finish up and give it a good look and feel to be the first step. Onwards will be this. Up here, there's going to be a whole video on how to do this rock work. I'm not gonna go over it in here because you may know already know how to do this. And if I put it in this one, it's gonna add 10 minutes to the video and I don't want to do that. So as you can see here, what's going to happen is this will now go onto here and it will fit pretty darn good. I'm going to do a little bit of chamfering here just to make sure that it's 100%. That's actually even better. But you'll get an idea here on how this goes from the floor and then proceeds up the wall. Really good theming. This is, this is going to turn out really nice. I've got four of these built already. And what they look like is something like this. Ignore this one. This is what happens when Sawin grabs a piece of styrofoam, does all the work on it to make it look like the stone that he needs, but neglects to check the width to make sure that he grabbed the right piece of styrofoam. This, this thing actually set me back double because this was meant for something else and I cut it in half and I cried a little bit. Man tears, but I still cried. 
regardless. This goes here, but in reality, it's going to be the thinner one. This styrofoam here is four and a half inches wide, where this one is five and a half inches wide. It just allows to have, you know, you when you're doing stuff like this, you want texture. You want to be able to see a difference in width and height, and it, it, it allows the eye to be more immersed with what it's seeing. And it also means that if you screw up, no one's going to see it. But don't tell them my little secret. Regardless, I'll be back. You'll see these painted when I get back. I'm going to have the acrylic grout on here. And the only other thing I'm going to be building, which I probably won't show exactly, will be one more of these, this piece right here. It'll just be the top block. It's, it's simple. It's a, it's a styrofoam block that's going to be cut and then made so it mates to the other side of that like that and finishes up the whole t the whole stone part of the arch before we go into the wood part of the arch anyways i'll be back and we're getting up to speed we talked about these blocks before i wanted to show you what it looks like once i put the acrylic grout on it which i'll link down below so you can find brilliant stuff if you ever buy a bag of this stuff it'll last forever now at the top here you can see that there is a small indentation and what that is, is it allows for when this comes down and inserts into there, you don't end up with a gap in there. So when you have, it gives you a bit of room for wiggling and moving this thing around to make it look good. So when you do this, just put this little dimple in here. I'm gonna paint this black because of course, once you have it, you might see the corners and such. And now this is hard, like this is great. This is gonna be a good thing on the floor. Weathering, all I did was I did a black dry brush and then with a brown wash, I went over and did some more areas just to give it a bit of grunge to it. So it wasn't, you know, brand new looking, which I always hate on props like this. So from there, we move on. You saw this right before, which was the, this is what you build it. Well, for me, I built this at 20 inches tall because it goes from that bottom spot up to the upper, uh, the upper block, which is this. And once again, exactly the same. D dimpled out of the bottom the top doesn't have to be because this is where the wood will attach I was tempted to dimple this but since I didn't know what my wood was gonna look like at the moment I decided to, to sneak around and not do it so this attaches onto the other side here before I forget like that once again hides that that gap gives a really good tight feel now what happens here is this was as I said on that video up there this is your stone 20 inches tall is what I did for my wall your wall will differ because you have different heights so adjust everything now here we go this is the finished rock work that that is is pretty much so straightforward it had a brown base coat which brought it to this level right here and from there I used a black wash which was just in a spray a spray bottle just to darken up some of the, the the recesses and then I went through and then using dry brushing I went and selected a whole bunch of different paint colors that are in the earth tone range and did one or two bricks here and there I think I did gray yellowish uh, it's, it's so oh and I did black here this is this is the original that's just the brown that was before everything is just what you want to make it look like you don't even have to do this as a range of colors I just like the mosaic colors it brings lots of realism to how that rock actually looks and appears on the wall and once again this is pretty strong you're not going to damage it very easily so from there we're going to be moving on to the wood after this and you can see here how this starts to come together now so that will We'll click into the bottom here, like so. And it's gonna click into the bottom with a little negotiation. And you can see how that that inset really makes it work well. And then we come to the other side, if I have room here in my messy garage, and then the second part goes there. And you can see really nice rock presentation. It looks really good on the wall, and when there's four of them, it looks even better. Anyways, you wanna hit this with a shot of clear coat when you're done because you don't want this to, you wanna be able to be dusted and you don't want it to pick it up a lot of dust itself because it's gonna be out long enough where it will run into problems. We're gonna go now onto the wood. Let's get all of my rock work out of the way. It's funny, my garage has got like 15 projects on the go. So I've got pieces for later projects kicking around and stuff that I'm working on. Sometimes I have to go find one I'm working on. Now, this is 
another two inch styrofoam blank. This is actually cut out of a four inch. You can do this at an inch and a half or whatever you get. You know, it doesn't have to be really thick, but this is going to add more dimension. And all I did is once I had sand, uh, cut it down, I used this to sand it down to get it nice and smooth. And this is going to be our wood riser now. So this will bring us up from the rock to the wood. Up here, there's a tutorial on how to do this foam wood. So I'm not going to go over it again. I hate to point lots of going, watch that video, even though you're watching this one. It's just, I don't like to repeat things if I don't have to. And it just adds to, it adds to video duration that doesn't need to be there, which I'd rather fill with my babbling. So here we go. I'm going to get this all ready. Once again, steel wool. I'll be back once I get this all textured up and we'll start talking about the upper finial that goes right here. I'll be back. All right, we're working on the finials and these are a bit more complicated. This is kind of the rough point where we need to get to, but I'm gonna show you that in reality, these are very complicated. If you don't have access to a bandsaw, these are almost gonna be impossible to build. But what's good news is how I'm doing these is very similar to how you to do these out of actual real wood. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your styrofoam and using the template that is down below, you're going to mark the side profile and then you're going to mark the top profile. And what this does is it allows you to cut out both. But the problem is, is if I cut out this one, it's going to cut out part of that one. So I can't see where the profile is. Same with this. If I cut it out, if I do it the other way around, sorry that if I cut out the side first, when I'm done, I'm gonna lose both these because they're both gonna be cut off. Now the trick here is this. You make your cut first with the single pass, and then what you do is you take it, and using masking tape, you tape the piece you cut off back on again. And then once you're done, you will still have the marks here, so then you do the second cut, and when you're all done, you see that it cuts it off there. You're all done, you take this off, and just like that, you've got your carved block. Well, not your completely carved block, but your middle carved block. Because after this, I'm going to do some more features, but I'm going to use a three-step process on that. Thank goodness I've got to make four of these because it helps me show you how they get built. And this is, of course, the completely raw version, which now I have to go cut out because I've shown you what I'm doing. Be back in a bit. Now, this is our final destination on that piece that I was showing you before. And how we get to there is actually... Pretty straightforward. I'll try to walk you through it as best I can. So the first thing is you mark 1.75, at least on this size, 1.75 on each side. Whatever size you pick, just make sure it looks somewhat symmetrical. It doesn't have to be exact. And of course, you are always going to deal with the fact that these ones are bigger than the rest of them. Now, using the knife, you start by taking out on each side of here, this full wedge on each one of these. And what happens, it'll pop out then starting up here, very gently, you work the knife in at about uh, not even a 45 degree angle and you keep on coming up until you connect with this trough you've already cut. Do the same thing on the other side and then gently, it should come out, but if not, use a screwdriver and just pop it out and you can clean it up after. Up here, you can see that there's a lip here now. All you do is you run the knife right along the top there, flip it over, run the knife along here. What it does is it just gives it a really nice, clean, defined edge where it is. And then using the knife here, you just chamfer the edges on the top to get it nice and beveled. The next step is beveling the rest of the edges. And then you want to smooth out. See, these are harsher. These are more smoothed out. Using a knife, what you want to do is you want to just take off this edge here. So like here, you'd be taking off that edge there. Just to round it out that little bit more, you'll end up with it looking pretty close to this. Now the final step is actually straightforward. You use sandpaper, and what you do is you use the sandpaper to clean up these rough areas. Smooth it out a bit, get it ready to where you need it. You get it as close as you want. You're gonna be able to gain a bit, because as you see, the heat gun hides a lot of the marks and the such, which is nice. Now, once we've got it to this point, if you wanna leave it clean, you can. I'm using a wire brush, so I wire brushed there using just the tip. I wire brushed the rest of this on the sides. You can see I wire brushed that and now and on the top. Now the final step is, is for me to heat seal this and it is done. 
and that's how you make these finials you know these are decently complicated but the end result looks fantastic you'll see it all starting to come together on the next step on the back we are getting up to speed here so the last thing we did is we built this and we built this top piece I went through and put a light brown dry brush just to finish up the style of it I'm gonna be sealing this with uh, some spray varnish now on the back you have the option of either gluing this or what I do is I put a single screw through deck screw to hold it all together and I just put a piece of tape across the back because it's going against well see it's opening up at the front there a little bit when it's going against the wall it holds beautifully and then if I need to disassemble this to put it away I can so this is our next step up this brings us up to the point of the arch which we're gonna work on now the arch is pretty straightforward to build in my case the arch is for to see if my numbers are still in my hand from yesterday they're not but I'll use this which looks like some sort of uh, nation attached to a stick here we go so the radius on the inside of the arch is 15.75 and then the outside radius is 20 and I did a video on how to make these sticks are pretty straightforward I love them for doing doing circles because you know once you have your your pivot point which is look how professional that is that is a screw all you do in order to build your radius is you take your piece of paper put the corner to that point there and then you just draw and it works out so perfect for doing these radiuses and you can see here this is the second piece oh wow that messes with the white balance my camera's like what the heck are you doing okay so once you've used your circle to cut this you end up with this a nice template um if you have access to two inch foam or two and a half inch foam use it if you have access to one inch use that as well i had one inch so this is what i've been using so i ended up doing a little bit of fun work on it to make it work so if you use one inch the only problem is is you need to go cut out uh what is it 12 of these yes so here we go now this is our final part of the arch and you look at how beat up the styrofoam is yes i like this to the outside because like i said before it adds character it's not perfect and so when i put wood grain on this all these big cracks and divots add to the character of the wood which is great now on the back so you'll see here this one is all the way through beginning to end a single piece you'll need two of these if you're doing what i'm doing here because this one ends up being the two end caps because you need obviously two for each arch now the center one here looks similar but on the flip side you will see that I have a big chunk cut out with a right side center. You don't have to do this, but what it does is it just adds that extra little bit of support. So when these go together, like so, oh, this isn't even the right one. You'll see how it's up here. I have to go grab the other one from the wall right now, but you'll see how it lines up perfectly and makes it so they mesh beautifully. So imagine this flip side is over to here. It looks really good. So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go through, I'm going to wood texture these. I've been struggling on what kind of wood texture I want to do because, you know, it's one of those things where technically the wood texture should be just a straight texture overall at about, let's move this out of the way, at about this angle because when you think about a board, unless you use uh, lamination or forced uh, stretching, your grain will always follow kind of the angle of the, the, the your grain will be straight and woodworkers they would use the best part to get as much strength out of this i think i'm going to go a little bit uh unrealistic and i'm just going to follow the grain on the arch we have some other parts that goes on to the top and the bottom here regardless i'm going to go continue on and uh, get 15,000 pounds and more styrofoam all over me we'll see you in a bit all right, this is the whole arch completely assembled. And this is what I was trying to describe earlier, is how these two work into each other. You can see it's only a half side here and a half side here. But I was gonna do a metal texture on this with some EVA foam, but I really like how that turned out. And all it was is I just routed the edge and then just did the wood treatment as always. 
you know, and it turned out really nice. Now the final, you can see here, everything just comes up. And what I did is I just stuck this to the wall with aluminum tape. I doubled it over on itself. The stuff is so sticky, it's great. Now, as you come back, you can see how the whole arch works together. And this can be used in so many ways to make a fantastic, like a doorway that goes onto a wall. You can use it for like what I do. And the reason why it has space on the top is because I usually have fall leaves that I put up there and they stay up until after Halloween. But anyways, it's really a great tool to have. This is just kind of saying, this is what's possible. Go run, have fun, make what you want and make it suit for where you need it. But there's lots of techniques here that you can use to do that. And you can see everything is expandable. You can change it. You can make it exactly how you want. Regardless, thank you so much for hanging out once again. Uh, we're getting into Halloween, but if you watch us in February, uh, we're not getting into Halloween. We're getting into summer. So... <laughs> The upcoming videos, regardless, are all going to be more uh, spooky themed. Hope you enjoy them. Uh, remember to like, share, subscribe, yodel, all that stuff that helps my videos get out there. And, uh, oh, just before I forget, if you want to build that, there's a whole set of videos up there. Have a good one, all.